Okay. Yeah, sure. So, okay, so you have the electron microscope here, which is essentially this thing. Wow. And then at the bottom, it produces electrons by pulling electrons out of a needle. And then you have the electrons that sit there, and then you have 300,000 volts, and electrons are negative. And they're mm -hmm. not like negative, they want to go to the positive. And so the rest of the microscope is is a ground potential and the top is at minus 300,000 volts. And so the electrons then start flying down. Wow. They go to half light speed and they fly down in the middle of this vacuum. And then we have magnetic fields that focus the electron beam. And then it's a microscope. And then we focus the electron beam onto a sample that sits here, onto a small spot. And then the sample has to be thin enough, like a mm. thin layer of ice. And then the electrons fly through. How do you create a sample that's that thin? We show you on the other one later. <laughs> okay, yes. And then at the bottom there's more magnetic fields and then at the end the electrons hit the camera. And on the camera, the, ah, wow. the, it's just a camera where the electrons yeah. hit it like the same as an, an iPhone. Ah. Yeah, light hits the CMOS <laughs> sensor and here the electrons hit the CMOS sensor. It's a special CMOS so that it survives the electrons. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then we get the images, and this camera is a high-speed camera, right? Mm. The camera alone is more expensive than a house. <laughs> yeah. So how much is the full, is the whole microscope? It's a million, it's many wow. millions, yeah. So, and we got so, a special deal with a... Uh, how many of these in the world are there? Of this type, maybe 300. Wow. 200 to 300, so... Wow, yeah. so what is, oh, I see. Wow. And okay. so the 300,000 volts, <laughs> acceleration valve which come through that black cable um, that goes out and in the back is a tank that makes 300,000 volts. Yeah? Uh -huh. And 300,000 volts is a lot, so you need a good cable. Um, mm. I think you have 10,000 volts per centimeter, so 300 volts could jump over 30 centimeters if you get <laughs> close enough. Wow. Right? So there it's in the cable, so the cable is better insulating than air, of course. And, <laughs> And we can take pictures that are so sharp that we can see atoms, right? And exposure time is typically one second. And so the microscope is so stable that over a second, it does not move by more than an atom. Wow. So it's absolutely stable when we close the door. Wait, the, so you can focus on a single atom or you can you see focus it? focus on the entire ice with all wow. the proteins and viruses and bacteria. But the pictures are so sharp that we can, after image processing, um, localized atoms. That is one of the coolest things I think I've ever seen in my life. Thank you. So this is yes. I mentioned that we need to uh, freeze the sample so quickly so it doesn't form crystalline ice. Mm. That way uh, it is electron transparent and what we do is we have this cup here, uh, we will condense the ethane from the gas, but first we need to cool down to minus 196 degree temperature with uh, liquid nitrogen. Mm. Here it is liquid nitrogen surrounding, and the cup, once it reaches minus 180, then you have the gas here, then you will condense the gas from the mm. gaseous ethane to liquid ethane. Mm. And then, can we, can we try one right now and see the process as it as No, it we need to cool down, that takes ah, longer. Okay, sorry. Yes. So, we have these pieces, which, these are the trash grids, which are three millimeters. Mm. And then you just hold at the, the ring, and then you apply the sample, and then you blot away 99, more than 99% of your sample, and then it forms a thin layer, hopefully between 50 and 100 nanometers. Ice. Oh, water in the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Water, then it's frozen. Ah. So, generally, these grids are not really uh, electrophilic. So Wait, is it any kind of water? Or, yeah, in the or sample, is it a specialized form of water? No. Uh, water is filled with all sorts of other things as well. It's just a normal water. Oh, normal wow. water. It's just with without the, any. With the protein that you want to study. Ah. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So, we call it this buffer, but it is basically water with some salt uh. and some substance to maintain the pH, huh. but like close to the physiological conditions. That is fascinating. Yeah, these are like uh, like manual, uh. so you have more human influence. And this one is a new in the market, is chameleon, 
which can be done everything automatic. So you just like give some three microliters, mm. it will take the grid, it will do the glow discharge. Mm. That's one thing we need to make the grid hydrophilic. Mm. And then it will take a nanoliter of the sample and then it will spray while the grid is going into the liquid ethane to plunge. Why is it called hydrophilic? Because that literally means yeah. to love water. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, when you have, as I shown here, the grid, it has a carbon layer. Uh, so when it is carbon, then it is fully like neutral. And then whenever you add the substance, it will repel. Mm. To make it like uh, water loving, mm. you just blow this charge <laughs> either here. Uh, uh, this is only with the air. Uh, so whatever it is, the nitrogen and the oxygen. And then it will make a, a plasma, which will just uh, hit hot on the carbon. How many people does it take to run this whole machinery? Sorry, sorry, could you repeat? How, how many people are necessary to run this whole uh, The DCI, lab? at the moment, the facility is currently run by five people. Okay. So you have many, many users. Oh. And with the three microscopes, with the sample prep, to screen, collect data, and do on the fly, to know something about your protein, yeah. like within a day or within even hours, you need like very efficient, dedicated. On average, like how many pictures are taken for every working day? Oh, uh, I would say on one microscope, I would assume around five to 6,000 movies. These are not one images. Mm. We can say like each image is a movie and mm. each movie is around 1000 frames. So basically so you in one day. Yes, on one microscope. Oh wow. So you generate terabytes of data. <laughs> yeah. And then you need also the workstations we can also show. Yeah. Uh, when you process them, these are all compressed. Oh. And then when you uncompress them, then mm. it is like even like uh, three to five times the terabyte you need the process. Mm. So where can we go to see those images now? I can show you if uh, the DC still has running. All right. Or, or on one of the microscopes maybe. On our microscopes? No. So him we have all these, these uh, microscopes. And the dedication of this city to this kind of uh, microscope. I mean, you got the Nobel Prize. Sorry, go. Yes. So it's it's a three millimeter large grid, mm -hmm. and in this grid, which is three millimeters, it focuses on a little square, and in that square is a carbon film that has round holes, and then the microscope goes to each round hole and takes a picture in there, mm -hmm. and just goes shoot, 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 shoot. And each time it has to move. The, the sample in the middle of the microscope and then focus correctly and then take a picture. And the pictures look like this. At the moment, we don't see anything. You need to do computer image processing to take 10,000 such pictures <laughs> and out of that make a high resolution structure of a protein. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for showing me all of that. That was pretty fascinating. Yeah, because I 